Shabbat Shalom. It's enough of a crowd. I want more. Shabbat Shalom. Right. So for our online community, uh, I doubled the sound in the room. So that was that was nice. Um, so welcome to Congregation Bethel for our special Shabbat service tonight, not just honoring Shabbat, but also honoring the Levies and Rabbi Levy's 50th rabbi versary uh, as we've come together tonight to uh, thank our Rabbi Emeritus here for his service to not just us, but to the wider Jewish community. Uh, if you're new to the congregation, just so you know, if I call out a page number, you're welcome to look in the book. If you have a book that has bracketed numbers on the pages, it's the bracketed number that I'll refer to. But everything that I say is also going to be on the screen. So it's your choice whether you want to look in the book or on the screen. But when I call out page numbers, uh, that's what we'll be doing. We're going to begin tonight with our lighting of our Shabbat candles. I'm going to ask uh, Rabbi Levy and Bobby to come up to the lectern and to our online friends I'm going to switch to that camera so and for those who are looking in the prayer book page 121 and across on 120 as we continue with our reading a source of light and truth creator of the eternal law of goodness Help us to find knowledge by which to live. Lead us to take the words we shall speak into our hearts and our lives. Bless all, all who enter this sanctuary in need, all who bring the offerings of their hearts. May our worship lead us to acts of kindness, peace, and love.
Baruch Atadonai Eloheinu Melcha Olam, Asher Kishan Vomitzvotav Vitzivanu Lahalik Ner Shel Shabbat. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, sovereign of the universe, who hallows us with mitzvot, commanding us to light the, the, Shab the Shabbat lights. Amen. our Shabbat candles. Uh, tonight, of course, we're honoring Jean. So I want to share with you first a little flashback for those of you who, uh, you know, I remember Jean back in 1972. I was negative one, so. Uh, <laughs> but this is the picture that I remember right here. Uh, here's a picture of the 1972 graduating class from Hebrew Union College. Uh, presumably this was Cincinnati, right? Now, if you're not sure which one is Jean, I'll give you a hint. Uh, it's this one right here, the nice polka dotted uh, there. And for those of you who saw uh, Jimmy Kessler next to him, um, these are the Gidolim. These are the great ones uh, who are celebrating their 50th rabbi anniversary. It's a personal mention besides Rabbi Levy, who I love. Uh, if you look in the bottom row, fourth in from the right, very dark goatee with round glasses. That's Rabbi David Foreman of blessed memory, who was my uh, rabbi and teacher and employer when I worked for Nifty in Israel. Uh, and I guess I never realized that you all were classmates with uh, David. So, uh, Mazel Tov on this 50th anniversary. We're going to move forward in our Shabbat service tonight, uh, a little bit uh, abbreviated Shabbat service. But as we make our way through, uh, we're going to sing some songs, offer some blessings, and have some celebration. So let us begin with the song, The Sun on the Treetops. This is a song that has been sung for many years as we welcome in Shabbat. As we honor Rabbi Levy, I've had the opportunity, this is the surprise, one of the surprises for tonight, I've had the opportunity to talk to some of those people in that photo uh, who wanted to share a mazel tov to Jean on this night. And so I'm going to hide myself, if you're online, I'm going to hide myself as we uh, hear at least the first uh, blessing of mazel tov from among those classmates. Hi, Jean. Richie Address, how are you? Mazel tov to you and to uh, Bobby and your entire family uh, on our 50th anniversary, uh, your 50th anniversary of Word Nation as well, from beautiful Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, it's a pleasure to, to greet you long distance, to wish you well, to say congratulations on a wonderful career. Uh, and as we transition to the next 50 years of our remnant, uh, God willing, just stay healthy and stay safe, especially right now. Thank you for all you've done um, for uh, talking about some of this stuff uh, with my 
my best friend and uh, the late Rabbi Tchaikovsky and uh, some of his exploits and with you and at, at, through your work in the congregation, in the community, in the communities that you served. Uh, 50 years is a long time and uh, you've done a tremendous job. You've influenced people, you've helped shape lives, change lives, been there, held hands, celebrated all the things that make the rabbinate the calling that it really, really is. You know, I'm recording this right on the portion, the Torah portion of Mishpatim. And so um, the phrase obviously that sticks out in that portion is that they have very, very end the Na'asev and Ishma. And I think that's a wonderful way to encapsulate the 50 years of your rabbinate. You, you did it and people listened and people heard and they understood your words. So for all of that, for the lives that you've changed, for the people you've helped, the lives that you've touched, for you and your family, stay healthy, stay well, mazel tov, and here's to 50 more. We continue with welcoming the Sabbath bride as we sing together the words of Lachado D and the first couple of verses with Megan and Weston. service so if you would like to turn to page 146 or if you'd like to just uh, be on the screen if you're able to stand please do so at this time as we continue with the barahu <laughs> Page 149. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Your wisdom sets the way on which time and season glide. Your breath guides the sail of the stars. Creator of the tide of time and light, you guide the current of day into night. As heaven spans to infinity, you set its course for eternity. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Together in Hebrew, Baruch Ata Adonai Hama'ariv Aravim. And on page 150 into 152, Ahavat Olam leading into Shema.
Yisrael. Page 155. Love your God with every heartbeat, with every breath, with every conscious act. Keep in mind the words I command you today and teach them to your children. Talk about them at work. Whether you are tired or rested, let them guide the work of your hands. Keep them in the forefront of your vision. Do not leave them at the doorway of your house or outside your gate. They are reminders to do all of my mitzvot so that you can be holy for God. Ani Adonai Eloheichem, I led you out of Egypt to become your God. Ani Adonai Eloheichem, Emet. And page 158, the words of redemption as we sing together, Mi Chamocha. Mi Chamocha Bailim Adonai, Mi Chamocha. I was able to search a little bit more and find another of those 72 classmates, a more one with a personal connection to me because of who this person's son is. Uh, but we'll take a listen to another Mazel Tov. Hi, Jean. No, that's not a pun on your cleanliness. I'm very happy to send you this message on your, actually our 50th anniversary of ordination. It has been quite a ride, hasn't it? We go way back, even before HUC days, when we were both counselors at Akatamawak better known now as Asrui. We were co-athletic directors that summer, and I was new to Reform Judaism, and you helped me get acclimated. You reformed me. At HUC, when we were classmates, I got better acquainted with your great sense of humor, which particularly manifested itself when we did a Passover Seder with a group of HUC couples, your songs were the hit of the evening. And you know what? I still use your songs at our own Sedarim. I gotta wash that man right out of my hair. I feet combing round the mountain when she comes. The days of wine and haroses and many other great billboard hits, you continue to make us smile. So mazel tov, my friend, and mazel tov to Bobby, who has put up with your constant stream of puns for so long. You deserve to party.
For those who are able to stand, we're going to continue. Before we go on, I just want to say that uh, Rab his son, Rabbi Julian Cook, his son, Rabbi Alan Cook, was the student rabbi and my closest classmate through, through the years of HUC. Are you all still seeing everything? I don't know what that noise is. Uh, he was, so Rabbi Alan Cook and Julie Cook, so Alan and I as classmates, he would tell me about this famed rabbi who I didn't know yet named Rabbi Gene Levy, who taught his father, Julian, so that was my first connection, uh, one of my connections to Rabbi Levy. If you're able to stand on page 164 and the even-numbered pages thereafter, we'll continue with the first few blessings of the Amidah and the Tefillah. Adonai sifatai tiftachu fi agit tehilatecha. Adonai open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu velohe avoteinu v'imoteinu. Please be seated. So a lot, of course, is being made about Rabbi Levy's 50th. Um, if you look in the press and look at about the, the graduating class of 1972, um, there's as much attention to the rabbis that graduated that year in this 50th, but in particular, if you looked at that picture from the beginning, uh, in the front row was something brand new to the Jewish world, and that was the first ordained female rabbi, who was a classmate of Rabbi Levy's, and that was Rabbi Sally Prezand, and like, she'd like to offer a message as well. Hi, Jean. I appreciate the opportunity to wish you Mazel Tov on the 50th anniversary of our ordination. I have fond memories of the years that you and I and all our classmates spent together in Cincinnati. There were challenges to face, but all of you made me feel part of the class, for which I am very grateful. After ordination, I always look forward to seeing you and catching up at our annual CCAR convention, which both of us attended regularly. My favorite memory happened at one of those conventions. We were in Cincinnati, and part of the program was the opportunity to visit one of the local cemeteries where Isaac Mayer Wise himself was buried, together with many of our own professors. 
There was one professor, Dr. Jacob Pentakowski, who had refused to sign my smicha, my ordination certificate. You were among those who joined me in visiting his grave that day. As I leaned over and placed a small stone on top of his headstone, it immediately popped off, <laughs> almost as if our professor was saying, no thanks. I have always been grateful that you were with me to witness this moment and tell others that it really did happen. May you and Bobby and all your family be blessed with everything good in the years ahead. Shabbat Shalom. We're going to continue on page 173 in our Shabbat service with another reading. May these hours of rest and renewal Open our hearts to joy and our minds to truth. May all who struggle find rest on this day. May all who suffer find solace. May all who hurt find healing on this day. May all who despair find purpose. May all who hunger find fulfillment on this day. And may this day fulfill its promise. Together in Hebrew, Baruch Ata Adonai, Mikadesh HaShabbat. And we sing together the words of Shalom Rav, or listening to it on page 178, with Megan and Weston. Rabbi Levy was the rabbi here from 1975 to 87. And so that seems like a long time ago, but there are still people in our community who know him and love him, but not just in our congregational community. And tonight I'd like to welcome up somebody who did some work with him back in the day, and that is the very Reverend M.L. Agnew, former rector of Christ Episcopal Church, my old job. And uh, if you'd like to come forward, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Reverend Agnew to share a few thoughts uh, on this anniversary of Jean's ordination. Neil, thank you for the opportunity to come and be with Bobby and Jean. You know, when you get to be 80 years old, it's, it's hard to remember how it was. <laughs> you either have short or long-term memory loss. But the truth of the matter is that the Levy's made an impression that will be everlasting for me. Patty and I grew up in Meridian, Mississippi. Regrettably, in the early 60s, Meridian did not have a very favorable reputation uh, in community relationships. In fact, uh, we had several uh, tragedies that occurred in Meridian or thereby. 
And one of the things that I remember growing up in Meridian was that when uh, those, uh, I would call them evil spirits, uh, came and burned uh, Temple Bethel, uh, the congregation there came and worshiped in my home parish, St. Paul's Episcopal Church. I have found that uh, the ecumenical spirit is what sustains us when we say shalom. It really does mean peace. When I was ordained 55 years ago, uh, again, I learned a lot from my colleagues. I had been very involved in ecumenical ministries, uh, trying to get colleagues to work together to improve the community in which we lived and be outward and visible representations of our Heavenly Father. It is not easy for clergy to do that. We sometimes feel that we are lone rangers. We're not colleagues, but we are in competition. Patty and I moved here from Natchez in 1981 where I had been a, a leader of an ecumenical biracial community. And I was looking forward to coming to Tyler, Texas. I heard some great things and I'd been here a short period of time and understood they had a ministerial alliance. Thanks be to God, they had a ministerial alliance. And the leader of that alliance was Rabbi Eugene Levy. Gene had an understanding that working together we could do God's work where we could see God's hand at work in the world about us. So the ministerial alliance of Tyler and Greater Smith County met together and discussed how we might make our community better as we joined hands. We discovered uh, I had a wonderful communicant named Bob Buford. And Bob came to my office one day at Christ Church and said, Emil, is there anything I can do for you? I said, well, Bob, I'm almost 40 years old and I've been in ministry for almost 15 years and no one's ever asked me that before. I said, my concern in ministry and Tyler is a wonderful place and we've got a great ministerial alliance. We've got a great mentor, a facilitator in Lab and Rabbi Levy. But you know, it is very difficult for clergy to come together in a collegial way. He said, well, I've got an answer for you. Why don't you talk to some of your friends in the ministry? Uh, Monsignor Milam Joseph, uh, Doug Vaughn of First Presbyterian, uh, Jim Foster of Pleasant Retreat United Methodist, Phil Fenton of the uh, Lutheran tradition, and Charles Seibert of the Church of Christ. And so I wrote these colleagues of mine a letter and simply said, would you join with me meeting on a Tuesday at 6.30 in the morning so that we don't interfere with any of our pastoral responsibilities and come together and share as to how we might be leaders in the community that favors our God. For the next six years, Gene, we met faithfully that Tuesday morning at the birdhouse on Paluxy. And out of the fellowship that was created and through the leadership of your one-time rabbi and now emeritus and his wonderful bride, we simply were able to constitute and initiate ministries in our community that still thrive. One's called P-A-T-H. Uh, Ms. Gertrude Windsor uh, called one day and said, you know, I, I find that uh, there are people who are falling through the cracks. And would you be able to do anything? I said, well, I've got a network of colleagues. I'll talk to them. And we went one Saturday morning and met on the porch of Ms. Gertrude Windsor. And from that beginning, PATH, which now has continued for 38 years, making a significant, significant contribution. But again, it all goes back to the leadership of the leader of this congregation. Gene had the wisdom and the courage to do the things that needed to be done, and he did them. And I was a beneficiary. I was a quarterback for 13 years. Uh, in fact, I think about my experience in learning Hebrew. The only reason I passed Hebrew in seminary was the fact that I was playing with the farm club of the Washington Redskins, and my professor liked football. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> he came to the games, and I got an A. <laughs> I love that relationship. And I may know one word, and 
Hebrew. But the truth of the matter is that I have stood in awe and respect for uh, your rabbi, for Gene Levy. And I'm grateful that I've come back to Tyler and enjoyed the, the ministry and the friendship of, of Neil Katz. You know, we're all children of God. And the sooner we learn that, the better off God's world will be. It is time to get away from uh, identities that separate us and to really reach out with the love of God, the one who calls us all beloved. Gene and Bobby Levy lived that understanding. They responded to that call and they became conduits through which that love made Tyler, Texas a better place in which to live. It's an honor to be with Bobby and Gene tonight, to think about when we were young. You know, Gene, I, I don't know about you, but I had some pastoral skills. I, I'm an Episcopalian, so I, I know a little bit about the Bible. Um, <clears throat> and I've tried to be a pretty good administrator through my 55 years, but when I look at what Neil is doing up here, and conducting a meaningful worship service and operating this technical board up here. I say, thanks be to God that I've retired. <laughs> well, as I, I reflect on a number of congregations in Mississippi that burned in the 60s because of hate, because of our inability to relate one to another as human beings. I'm pleased to say that the fire that's in the heart of Bobby and Jean Levy is the fire that really continues because we can rebuild those buildings, but we're able to do it because of the inspiration that people like Bobby and Jean have given to you and me. May that fire continue to burn, Jean. Bobby, thanks be to God to be with you tonight. Neil, thank you for the invitation, and may God bless all of you as your life and your ministry has blessed us in East Texas. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Agnew. It's, been, uh, it's always a pleasure to see him, and I love the fact that he has come back to Tyler and continues to bless our community. We take a moment for silent prayer. Uh, we always put up a piece of artwork. Uh, this one is going to be called The Promised Land by an artist named Alex Levin. Why this particular picture? You'll see the little gematria number, the little uh, Hebrew numbers that add up to a special number tonight from the word land, Adama. And then we'll sing together the words of Ose Shalom following. So we take a moment for silent prayer. to say hi to Rabbi Levy. 
I just want to share, I, I really not, I didn't prepare anything personally to say tonight because I wanted to give you time. Uh, I'm going to switch to the bigger screen for those who are online, but you know, tonight we come together to honor sacred time, Shabbat, but this is also an opportunity for us to honor a sacred profession. And so I'm happy and honored to bring up Rabbi Jean Levy to share with us his own reflections, oops, uh, his own reflections tonight uh, on his 50th. Thank you. Wow. Here, let me get this out. Mm. Wow. Well, in the words of the education director who probably in San Antonio who probably sent me on my way to rabbinic school, I am virtually bankrupt. Your rabbi really knows what it means for kavod harav, to, to honor a rabbi. And uh, as I've said to you all many times, and I know this is, is really not about him, but, but it is about him in many ways, uh, you got the cream of the crop in his ordination class. And I see a lot of nods so that you know that that, that is the case. Um, I want to acknowledge um, my family, uh, Bobby's sisters who are here, and uh, brother-in-law, my brother-in-law, good friends who are here from the time when we lived here, congregants who helped prepare the goodies for tonight. Um, and uh, again, thanks to Neil, your great rabbi, who though he is the same age as my son Jeremy, I consider a colleague on, on equal footing equal footing except when it comes to words with friends where wherein he beats me nine out of every eight games that we play together and for that I will not be able to forgive him until next Yom Kippur I want to thank Pam listener for all of the arrangements that she's made and to all the folks who helped her uh, put together the Oneg tonight uh, to the congregation who gave me my congregational start in 1975, put up with my Michigas for 12 years, and honored me by granting me emeritus status. I, to all of you, I am eternally grateful. Well, Neil gave me 10 minutes <laughs> to summarize 50 years <laughs> to talk about Tyler, Little Rock, and the future, and he puts a microphone in front of a rabbi and expects 10 minutes. So set your watches. The Oneg, I think, is gonna begin at 10.30. <laughs> um, I'm gonna divide this into three brief areas, like Gaul, uh, for those of you who studied Latin, and Gaul, uh, which I still have some of, despite gallbladder surgery in 1993. The Torah portion for this particular week is called Amor. It sounds like the word love in, in uh, Spanish and Italian, but uh, it deals with a chapter. There's a chapter in there on the Jewish festivals at their appointed seasons. And I've always enjoyed this particular part of the, of the Torah reading from Leviticus. As you know, Leviticus can be rather tedious and sometimes boring, but Year in and year out, wherever I am, I like to study these, the seasons, uh, the holidays, the festivals, and so I've divided this into three type of seasonal uh, events. Uh, time in Tyler, some remembrances that you'll help me with, time in Little Rock, and then reflections on some major shifts and changes over these last 50 years and maybe dealing a little bit into the future. So this was my first pulpit. Um, 1975, I was Hillel director for three years before that. Uh, and at the first couple of, of rabbinic conventions, as you heard Rabbi Sally uh, talk about, they honored the 50-year the rabbis uh, every year. And I would look up and go, I was 28 years old, 30, 29, 30, 31. I'd say, these rabbis are so old. <laughs> And I look up the average age between, the average age of a rabbi who had been out 50 years was between 80 and death. <laughs> and, and so I've always wondered, does my class look the same to the 28-year-olds 
as the 50-year-old class looked to us when we were 28 years old. It's just, it's an amazing thing to think about. So some of you remember, how many of you remember the old temple, which uh, unfortunately is in, we walked, we drove by it today and it's in, in sad shape. I don't know what they're doing with it now, what's gonna happen, but it, it did bring back some good memories though. Um, one of which was um, Rabbi Wessel, Harvey Wessel, who was the emeritus when I came here. And uh, one of the stories that I remember hearing about him, some of you may have even uh, uh, been part of it, is that, you know, that temple was in a neighborhood. It was the only, you know, non-residence in a neighborhood of residences. And so they were getting ready to pave the sidewalks. This was in the, like the, the early 1940s, maybe late 1930s. And the sidewalks were, were paved around across the street, but not in front of the temple. So they were getting ready to pave the, the sidewalks. And Rabbi Wessel had a, a, uh, a knowledge of, of, of children. He loved, he loved children, so, so I was told. And he enjoyed talking to the children as they came home from school. They would be quite, you know, walk through the yard on their way to their homes, and he would, you know, say hi to them. And except when they were, you know, putting down the the sidewalk, and with, you know, marked off in various areas, and the kids, well, you know, we, you would come and stomp in the, you know, in the in the in the cement and then walk off and Rabbi Wessel came out and he yelled and he screamed at him, you know, go home, you rotten kids, da 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 And one of the parents evidently came out and said, Rabbi Wessel said, you, you have a reputation of loving these children. What are you yelling at him for? He says, I love them in the abstract, but not in the, con <laughs> but not in the concrete. Um, you may remember, those of you who remember the old temple, the yard site plaques, the, the kind of the vestibule that led in, the, the sanctuary was here, the social hall was there, and the, the vestibule had the yard site plaques in there. One night, uh, actually it was a, probably just a, a couple of years before he died, uh, we were out there, I was ushering him out to his car, and he looked up at the yard site plaques, and then he looked into the, to the uh, social hall, and he looked at the yard site plaques, and he looked into the social hall and he said, Gene, he said, that's my congregation up there. That's your congregation in there. And it was, it was really very, very touching, very, very sad. Some of you may remember visits to Tyler by my uh, professor, Dr. Ellis Rifkin. He installed me here. He also did the same in, in Little Rock. He's of blessed memory. He died in 2007. Uh, and. Um, I've always mentioned that he was my mentor, while most of the other uh, professors at the Hebrew Union College were my tour mentor. He became my mentor, and he really helped me uh, focus my, my outlook on Bible. Um, ML, I re th Reverend Agnew, thank you. I remember going to the races in Shreveport with Father Milam Joseph. You may remember some of these. He was, Milam Joseph was at Immaculate Conception and Milam was able to rationalize to his parishioners that we were going to the races by saying that he was going to Shreveport to discuss race problems. <laughs> as, as, in, as in, who's gonna win the fourth race? Now that's a problem. ML, I, I'm deeply gratified for you being here tonight and thank you for those words. Uh, you are a, a tremendous mentor to me, being five years older and um, or, I'm sorry, only three years old, right? And uh, thank you for being here tonight. Some of you may recall uh, our son Jeremy, who is gonna be 50 uh, in August. Uh, when he was three, he would be running around the temple during services, not unlike some other kids, but, but you know, he was. And uh, one particular Friday night, a, a frustrated temple president at the time asked me, uh, took me aside and said, Gene, what do you think Jeremy would like to be if we let him grow up? <laughs> True story. I was always proud of Bethel's financial support of Green Family Camp and the regional UAHC when it was called UAHC. It has a different name now, Union for Reform, Con Union for Reform Congregations. 
Uh, and I remember dearly Shirley Elthus, uh, who was the first woman president of a reformed congregation. And we had her here, 1977, the first woman president of a congregation right here in Tyler. Um, I loved her, but I was still a bit uncomfortable with her holding the Torah on Yom Kippur. But boy, did she pave the way for women in leadership roles, and more on that in a few moments. I'm going to get back to something about Rabbi Prezand. I was also, as, as uh, Reverend Agnew said, I was proud of the temple's role in the founding and support of the East Texas Hospice and of PATH, and I know Neil has been extremely active in both of those as it continues to this very day. And Bobby reminded me, thanks to all of you who helped participate in Hands Across America, 1985, already, four, you know, 40, almost 40 years ago, as a group of us went up to, uh, uh, where Interstate 30 uh, hit about 50 miles from Mount Pleasant and helped hold hands across America. Some of you may remember some sermons that may, may have just barely been touching on political, ethical issues, though I tried to be very careful not to endorse any specific candidates. One Yom Kippur after services, the temple president said to me, you'll know who this is, but I will not mention names. He said, Rabbi, your sermon tonight sounded very much like the platform of the Democratic National Convention. And I remember answering, I think the Democratic National Convention took their platform from the best reform had to offer. Tracy, do you know who that was? John. <laughs> it wasn't you, but it could have been. It could have been. Um, Bobby and I visited Adele Regan this afternoon. We always like to go over there. And Adele reminded me of the kiddish dinners that were a, a really a hallmark here. And I remember one of the very first ones when uh, the temple invited the first woman rabbi in Texas, uh, Ellen Lewis, to come and be the speaker. And I'm going to pretend that you all are part of that group. And so Ellen Lewis, uh, she was in da Temple Emanuel in Dallas, and she got up in front of the group. There were probably 80 or 90, maybe 100 folks there. And she said, I have a question for everybody. What do you call the wife of a rabbi? And then she said, what do you call the husband of a woman rabbi? And there was silence. And finally she said, lucky. <laughs> she endeared herself and continued, and she had, you know, people paid attention to her right away. Uh, we began coffee, cake, and conversation here, the concept of which I took with me to Little Rock, and it was active until COVID brought it, and as you know, many other in-person events uh, to a standstill. We had a glorious 100th anniversary here in, in the temple in 1986-87 with lots of programs and dignitaries, including the visit of Rabbi Alexander Schindler, who was president of the UAHC at the time. Uh, it was also uh, for the greater temple and, and community, and it was also a time, sadly, but had to be that I was interviewing for Little Rock. Uh, and had to tell Evelyn on the last day of, the, of that weekend that I probably was going to be leaving and going to Little Rock uh, later in that, that summer. So we moved to uh, the bulk of my rabbinate was in Little Rock. It did not take long before one congregant came up to me in my office with complaints. Congregants with complaints? <laughs> Rabbi, you spend too much time talking about what you did in Tyler. You keep saying we did this in Tyler, we did that in Tyler. Well, I was proud of what we did and I didn't have anything to measure it by. So I, you, you are, the congregation here had eternal life uh, in, that, in that period of time. Um, you know the opportunities I had with the involvement in the Clinton for President campaign and the opportunities to be involved in the 1993 inauguration in, in Washington and then various visits to D.C. and the White House. And in the middle 1890s, many of you have the memoir I wrote about six years ago detailing what I called a privileged encounter with Bill Clinton, 1987 to 2000. I had the opportunity and a privilege to go to Israel five times about what Neil does in one year. Uh, no, no. Um, 
uh, and serve post-retirement monthly pulpits in Fort Smith, in Bentonville, in Pine Bluff, in McGee, Arkansas, and Mandeville, Louisiana. Unfortunately, we had to close the Pine Bluff and McGee congregations in May of 2016 within six days of each other. And I was involved with both of those. And I was trying to find a desanctification ceremony to be able to take the congregation that was holy congregation and make it back into, you know, secular in terms of the building and what the building would be used for. I asked, I, I put on Facebook and all this, what, you know, is there a desanctification ceremony? And one of my wonderful esteemed colleagues said, I don't think so, but just take a sanctification ceremony and read it backwards. Which, <laughs> so, so actually I did that part of the time. Uh, and one of the attendees at the, when we closed McGee, Arkansas, where Neil happened to serve for a, as a student rabbi for a while, uh, came up to me and said, Rabbi, this service was a combination funeral and high school reunion, which is what it was. The Torah from, from Pine Bluff, uh, we were getting ready to take to Guatemala in February of 2017, when I found out that grandson Theo had come down with ALL, acute lymphatic leukemia, and had been for a while on an ECMO machine, and I had no idea at that time what an ECMO machine was. Uh, many of the congregants here were very, very supportive. Much of that was a lost year with trips to California about every three weeks for over a half a year. And many of you kept up through Ari's FaceTime articles uh, complimenting us on, on how well he wrote. Uh, he's now been, uh, he works for, for uh, CNBC and he is one of their chief editors uh, on the West Coast. Uh, Bobby and I so appreciated your involvement and your care, and he's absolutely healthy now. Um, I retired from the temple in uh, Little Rock, not under the best of circumstances, in 2011, with my last uh, CCAR uh, being in New Orleans in 2012. Often Rabbi Prezan and I were the only ones from our class who were attending CCAR conventions. Uh, my class, wonderful, you saw the picture, and you'll show that great class, we were terrible at going to conventions, awful. At most, we'd have four or five or six. And Sally was at every one, and I was at every one except, uh, except uh, following 2012. In 2012, I sat with my friend Rabbi Jimmy Kessler of Galveston, and Neil will appreciate this. We were looking at the programs that they were being offering at the CCAR, the technology of this, the technology of that, the use of multimedia, ML, just like you were talking, looking at all this up here, possibly even early versions of Zoom, electronic liturgy, and we shook our head and said, who needs this? What is this ever gonna be used for, right? <laughs> the newer generation, they use it just perfectly. Like your great Rabbi Neil Katz, whose high holiday services, Shabbat, and funerals on Zoom have simply uh, blown me away, we've continued to be linked to the temple over the past few years, and I couldn't do all of that if my life depended on me. Which brings me to the last topic, changes uh, over these years, uh, and I'll mention just a couple. Ordained in 1972, as you saw here, 50 years ago next week, June 2nd, 36 from the foundation stone of Reform Judaism, HUC in Cincinnati, with the first woman rabbi, Sally Prezand. 50 years later, the only person from our class who goes to the rabbinic convention, Rabbi Prezand. The rest of our names are up there, and one of my friends, Rabbi Peter Grumbacher, says that this year it was Rabbi Sally and the 35 Schleppers. <laughs> because we didn't get much attention, but Sally deserved it. Um, a few, you know, she was the first woman, and in 2009, when one of our Little Rock young women was ordained, uh, I went to Cincinnati for her ordination. Her class, instead of 36 plus New York, was a total of 14. I believe something like nine women and five men. By that time, the, the uh, gender, uh, had changed in terms of more women than men. And uh, as I was talking to a student rabbi just a couple of weeks ago, 
the majority of the seminarians continue to be women, and the entire CCAR is now half women and half men. Uh, quite different from when I was going. While the spiritual and academic quality of today's rab rabbinic students is still quite prevalent, the loyalty to one seminary in one location and to one type of Reformed Judaism is much more fluid. And case in point, I'm mentoring a female student who entered the HUC rabbinic program in Cincinnati uh, and, and over the last three years has taken she lives now in Israel. She takes courses from this seminary and that seminary and online and pardes and, and it's conservative. And I asked her, I said, you know, we, you, you're going to be a reform rabbi, I think. You know, that's the way we started. Where are you going to be ordained? And she said, I don't know. So it's very fluid now. I'm sure Rabbi Katz will be talking more about that as the months and years go on. The lack of rabbis, I believe, and you probably have heard, that the Cincinnati campus of the Hebrew Union College is going to be closing in four years. Uh, it's going to gradually move up so that the, the, young, the, uh, the first year class is zero, then they'll move up to the second year class. Nobody will come in, nobody will come in. And by 2026, the Cincinnati campus, the, the, the cornerstone of Reform Judaism, will be closed as a rabbinic school. We were taught at HUC, Neil, I'm just about finished. We were taught at Hebrew Union College that if you went blank and you could not think of a title for an upcoming sermon, you could always call it At the Crossroads because we always seem to be at the crossroads of some something. Uh, the same for Hebrew Union College and the future of the Reform Rabbinate. We are definitely at a crossroads. There will be a reimagining of the college and the Reform Rabbinate. As I said, the Cincinnati campus will close in 2026, and there are fewer and fewer. I think the incoming class is somewhere between three and six for this year. The pools are shrinking. COVID has taken its toll on many congregations, and you all will be dealing with many of the shifting sands for years to come. But for tonight, thank you for giving me the foundation to be a congregational rabbi, for surrounding me with love and great leaders during my tenure here, and for honoring me with emeritus status. It's obvious that none of this could have happened without Bobby at my side the entire time, in sweet times and in not so sweet times. And thank you for living up to your name, Bethel, a house of God, through which justice will be pursued forever and always. Amen. Thank you. Just like I wrote it. <laughs> just like I wrote it. So we were, I'm not doing this long speech, I just want to share that, you know, we were trying to figure out what to give you, right? What do we give you as a gift besides the service? And what is the, and this is the idea, what is the, uh, what is the traditional gift that you give on the 50th? Gold, that's right. Ah. Shabbat Shalom to all of you, and Mazel Tov to you, Rabbi Levi, Bobby, and your entire family. Rabbi Katz and Congregation Bethel, thank you for including me in this Jubilee celebration in honor of Rabbi Levi's 50th anniversary of his ordination. It's a wonderful coincidence that this week's Torah portion, Bahar, discusses laws of the Jubilee year. Or maybe it's not a coincidence and you planned it this way. In either event, lots of good things happen during the Jubilee year. It's a sanctified year, a year of freedom. Slaves are given their liberty. Even the land is given freedom, given rest from planting and harvesting. Jean, I hope this is a year for you, a time of sanctification in the sense of special and joyous. And I hope your retirement has meant a degree of freedom and rest. At the same time, however, I'm told that you're still serving the Jewish people at small congregations, 
you're teaching, and I'm also told that you are being with our people at the most critical times of their lives, births, weddings, funerals. Kol HaKavod. I think Congregation Bethel made both of us rabbis. The experience we gained here was invaluable. I don't have to tell you because you told me initially they were a wonderful group of people, patient, kind, but made us want to serve with distinction. When I arrived, I was only a two-year-old rabbi. As one of the most recent predecessors, you were incredibly kind to me. We spoke even before my first interview. Even after, you were always generous with your time and knowledge for all the years I was in Tyler. If I had any success at Congregation Bethel, you were one of the reasons. Cindy and I enjoyed our time with you and Bobby at Green Family Camp, and I'm sure you recall our times at URJ and CCAR conferences. For me, it was a time to catch up, but also to share my challenges and probably some of my complaints too. I always got good advice from you with no judgment, only encouragement. I also enjoyed your humor. So here's a quick story for you. It's not really Jewish, but I'll ingeniously make it one. So there's this Jewish guy there. Now it's Jewish. And he retires and decides he'll become a beekeeper. So he goes to an established beekeeper and says, I want to buy 12 bees. Just 12 bees, only 12. Okay. Guy goes home, counts his bees, he's got 13. He calls the beekeeper and says, hey, I wanted to buy 12, you gave me 13. What's the deal? The answer was, oh, the 13th bee, that's a freebie. <sighs> okay, now that everyone's done groaning. No doubt, I should have said this some time ago. Not the joke, but everything else. So I'm grateful for this occasion, your Jubilee, because it has given me a chance to correct my omission. Again, Mazel Tov, may you go from strength to strength. Thank you, Rabbi Gold. Chazak, chazak, v'nid chazak, from strength to strength, as he said. Um, first, a, a correction, because I've gotten a couple texts about, about it. For those of you who'd like to do math, and can't realize that I can't add up to the number 50. Um, if you notice in the, the, the silent prayer slide, I said there was some gematria, right? And he equaled 50. The truth is it does equal 50. I just wrote the number 30 under the men when it should be 40. That's okay. It does equal 50. I just put the wrong number there. Math is not my strong suit, but all I do know is, is uh, we got a free B out of it. Okay. The, the gematria was right. My, my text was wrong. Uh, I want to thank uh, Rabbi Gold for uh, being part of this uh, tonight, for sharing that. That joke worked out perfectly. You know, we're going to give you gold. I called up Steve, and he said, sure. Uh, and then Rabbi Cook and Rabbi Prezan and Rabbi um, Address. And at the end, we've got one more uh, guest, a uh, very short uh, Mazel Tov video to you. Um, and Jimmy Kessler was going to come online tonight out of Galveston, but he's been ill, but he sends his love. And we've been talking about this uh, for months. And I know that he's upset that he couldn't be here, but he sends his love. Um, and just on a personal note, and then we'll move quickly uh, uh, because of time, but uh, Rabbi Levy has been a mentor to me for, for many years. Before I ever knew him, I met his son. Uh, Jeremy and I were uh, co-counselors on that Israel trip, that fateful Israel trip of the summer of 1994. Later did I find out that you know his dad was Gene Levy through Ab Alan Cook, and then later did I come and see Jeremy's little face on the religious school wing wall uh, down there. And so uh, just a great mentor to me, but also Rabbi Gold, who I've had a wonderful chance to learn from as well, and of blessed memory, Rabbi Jeff Ballin. Uh, I, those were the three former rabbis of Bethel that I got to know, and I got to know Rabbi Ballin through SWAR, the Rabbinic Conference, and uh, Ann Lois, who I believe is online tonight, um, sends her love as well. So uh, on behalf of those three rabbis, I feel like we're continuing that chain of transmission of rabbinic leadership and love here at Bethel as we are honoring you tonight. We have another uh, very brief uh, from a, uh, not really a rabbi, but I would say kind of another high mark person. Um, I'm going to share with you the letter that was received to Rabbi Levy. 
and it comes from uh, President Bill Clinton. Uh, this is going to be mailed to you at your house in Little Rock. So he says, Dear Gene, I'm delighted to join your friends and loved ones in congratulating you as you celebrate 50 years of being a rabbi. This remarkable milestone is a recognition of your enduring commitment to faith and fellowship, the spiritual enrichment and guidance you have provided to your neighbors, your devotion to serving God by helping others. I'll always be grateful to you for your friendship and support, and I'm sending my very best wishes to you on this joyful occasion. Sincerely, Bill. Clinton. Tracy, Bill Clinton was president of the United States. <laughs> so that, that document is going to be making its way to, to Little Rock. <laughs> to Little Rock. Uh, so I'm going to continue uh, with, in our service with some uh, quick announcements, and then we're going to move quickly to our, our cottage, skipping through a, a few things. But just uh, a couple announcements. We had some birthdays this past week here at Bethel. So Mazel Tov to Garner Goodman uh, and Ladine Plus and Dolly Wolf and Paul Haney, and today is Grayson Goodman's birthday, so mazel tov to them. And this past week was uh, Katya and Josh Banta's anniversary, or as I have trademarked it, the, a bantiversary. So uh, mazel tov to all of them, uh, and I want to say thank you to our organist tonight, Weston Jennings, who is a fill-in for Jeffrey Ford, our regular organist, but Weston, who has played for us many times before, and when I asked him if he would be here tonight for this special occasion, absolutely. So thank you to Megan for her voice, as always, and to Weston uh, for filling in on organ tonight. Thank you to the Bethel Sisterhood Flower Fund uh, for the beautiful pulpit flowers and the flowers you're about to see in the social hall, and to our own egg hosts, which is really uh, a, a a wide group of people from the congregation, not one single person, but I do want to specifically mention and thank Pam Listener for her help in organizing this beautiful Oneg that we're about to have uh, and organizing the food. So thank you to uh, Pam for this beautiful night. If you are interested in adult study, it will be online again only tomorrow at 11 a.m. Uh, here on this Zoom channel for those who would like to join. So you're welcome to. I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but I know many people, you know, Cliff Burke was in the back. He says, Rabbi, when are you going to talk about Tikkun Leil Shavuot? All right, let me talk about Tikkun Leil Shavuot for a second. If you're interested, uh, it's in a couple weeks. I'll talk more about it, and I'll send out an email. But it's an online, all-night study session between uh, many rabbis around the country. You just kind of, for free, figure out this is the topic I want to hear. I want to learn about Star Trek at midnight or Ruth at 10 p.m. or, uh, you know, the Frisco Kid at 4 a.m., whatever their offering is, uh, you can go on and log in for free. Just today, I put this up, uh, it, the, the note went out to the congregation, but the registration is finally, after a few month delay, because we, we made some tweaks, uh, we have a registration form up for our congregational trip between us and First Presbyterian Church, but it's not just rooted in the congregations. Anybody can join this Israel trip next March 5 through 15. So you'll see that on social media and our temple website, and I'll have a year to promote it. So. For those of you who've been waiting for the registration link, it is up. Uh, we are going to continue in our service with Amisha Berach, a blessing for those in our community in need of healing. Amisha Berach, avotenu vimotenu, may the one who blessed our ancestors be present to those in our community who are in need of healing and of strength. We pray for continued strength for Adele Regan and Jimmy Franks, continued strength for Deborah Stein and Miriam Rubin, for Carla Bailey and Dan Lawrence, for Robert Yantis and Bob Healy, for John Thallenfeld and Heather Holmes, continued strength for Shelley Regan, Joanne Lord and Paul Siegel, and strength for John Taylor, Leon Finkelstein, and Bill McGough. And with our friends in Longview, we pray for strength for Mitzi Milstein and Audrey Carroll, for Debbie Shellen and Grace Eddings, for Sue Ann Day, and for Joseph. Baruch atadonai mirapeh et hacholim. Blessed are you, Lord our God, who heals the sick. Together we say, Amen. And if you'll bear with me, I'm going to skip through a few slides as we make our way to our mourner's Kaddish. This evening, uh, we are going to honor the yard sites from those in our community, as well as some with our friends in Longview. Tonight, we honor the yard sites, the yearly anniversary memorializing of Charlotte Nestle, Sadie Silberstein Jacobs, Pauline G. Meyer, Ann Wolfson, Sam Gross, Minnie Margulis Robinson, Jenny Goldberg Selman, Amy Rose Shane, Howard G. Goldstucker, Zell Listener, Morris Muntz, Isidore Williams, and with our friends at Emmanuel Longview, 
honoring the yard sites of Ada Milstein and Bruce Greeley. If you are able to stand, please do so at this time as we continue with the mourners Kaddish. Yitgadal v'yitgadash shemei rabah ba'almadi v'rachir u'te v'yamlich malchute v'chayei chon v'yomei chon v'chayei d'chol v'et Yisrael v'agala v'izman kari v'imru amen. Yehei shmei rabah mevarach le'alam u'lalmei almaya yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitbar v'yitromam v'yitnaseh v'yitadar v'yitalei v'yitalal shmei d'kudusha v'rechu le'ela min ko b'irchata v'shirata Tushbechata v'nechemata, d'amiran b'alma v'imru, amen. Yehei shlama rabba min shmaya, v'chayim alenu v'al kol Yisrael, v'imru, amen. Ose shalom b'mromav, hu yase shalom, alenu v'al kol Yisrael, v'imru. Zichonam l'vracha, may their memories continue to be a blessing, we say, amen. Please be seated. Uh, we're going to have a, a wonderful final video of uh, blessing to Rabbi Levy, so I'm going to cut out, uh, and he's been waiting, actually he's not even online too, he's been waiting, so we've got Rabbi Grumbacher to come and say Mazel Tov. Shabbat Shalom. I'm so glad that I'm able to roast, uh, I'm sorry, that, let me begin again. I'm so glad to honor my friend and classmate. Of course, by the time you see this, Jean and Bobby, Susie and I, will have returned from a Hawaiian experience. And maybe we're not speaking to each other, but I doubt it. Oh, how I remember the first time I met Jean. It was the summer of 1967. All the rabbi wannabes were gathered at the Cincinnati campus of Hebrew Union College to begin the required program preceding the beginning of our first year of study. There he was standing alongside Jimmy Kessler, watching their Opal being taken off the carrier for disabled automobiles and onto the driveway of the campus. I said to myself after a mutual introduction, hmm, they seem like nice enough guys, but I can't understand a word that they're saying. As a New Yorker, Texas ease was as foreign to me as Welch, but something told me that New York ease was equally as foreign to them. They probably couldn't understand me either. So I figured it out. For 55 years, Gene and I have not understood each other. Susie and I send our very best wishes to you, Gene, to, to Eugene, Eugene, to Bobby and the family for good health and joy over the next 50 years. I almost forgot, Gene, one more thing. Being emeritus myself, I recently found out the true meaning of the term emeritus. The E in ancient philosophy means without. So for all intents and purposes, it means without merit. But Gene, that does not fit you at all. Mazel tov to you and the congregations you've served. And I want to thank you for being a great friend. Thank you to Rabbi Grumbacher as well uh, for these, these blessings. Uh, we're going to have a closing song and then we're going to do a Kiddush and Motzi up here so we can go right to the food. Um, and then Rabbi Levy, if you want to come up here after and just say hi to the, the Zoom world, people are going to want to say hi to you as well. So on, we're going to conclude on the screen with the singing of Adonai Li, the final text from Adon Olam.
was in peace, so may our going be in peace. I wish everyone, do not move yet, I wish everyone Shabbat Shalom. So, Shabbat Shalom. That's together. We're going to do Kiddush Emotzi here just so we can uh, move quickly to the beautiful Oneg together. The short version. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei peri hagafen lachayim. And there are some for you out there. And we'll say the blessing over the food together. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam amotzi lechem min haaretz. Amen. There's a some beautiful chalot that were made for tonight. There's a dark one that's uh, like a honey wheat buck, uh, honey buckwheat or something like that. If you have nut allergies, stay away from that dark one. Other than that, enjoy. Wish everyone Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. And let's go for Oneg. Shabbat Shalom to everyone online. Hello, Rabbi. Hi, are you, can you all hear us? I can hear you, yes. Yeah. Yes, we hear you. Hold on, I'm getting there. It's hard to hear you all, but uh, let's say hi to Jean real quick so they can hear you. Just... Hi, Rabbi. Hi. hi. I'm trying to see who's out there. I'm going to put on my glasses so I can see who's there. Adele, say hi. Hey, Adele, enjoyed our visit this afternoon. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. I love you. Hi. Hey, Peter. Wow, nice. Hi, Rabbi Levy. Hi, Rabbi. I didn't know that you went to Osrui. I didn't know that you were a counselor there. Oh, yeah. That's, That's where, where I decided to become go. a rabbi up there. That's where my kids go. That's yeah, fantastic. 